Okay. Hello and welcome everybody. Um, thank you for joining us for Excursions 2022 is Virtual Familiarization Week. Um, as you know, we uh, take the, took the decision at the end of last year to move the show to, to March for everybody's um, safety. Um, and I think that's been a wise decision. I think it's given us all, everybody a bit more time to settle into um, the new sort of guidelines or as they're, they're changing from January. Um, um, so I hope we will see you at the show in uh, March still. Uh, we felt that we wanted to ensure that um, January didn't go unnoticed as we've always been the first show of uh, the year for group travel trade. Um, so we wanted to do a precursor to uh, for our exhibitors and give you a um, of wet your appetite really into what's to, into some of the destinations so you can bring your questions along and come and chat to them when you get to the show. Um, so I'm really pleased to say hello. Uh, I've got with me today on the call um, the great partners from the Great West Way which is very exciting and always lovely to hear from. And I've got Karen with me as well who you all rem recognise um, helping drive in the background as well. So um, Bear with us. Uh, we, we've been doing this on and off for the year, but um, I think we're all many people are still working from home. So there are, you know, children and dogs and and all of those things around. So if if we have any interruptions, um, if you could just uh, uh, bear with us, that would be fantastic. Um, in terms of housekeeping, you've all done it already. So thank you very much uh, for being on mute while the presentations are in place. Um, we have a chat function um, and at the bottom of your screen there is a chat button. Uh, we will be, um, that should appear on the right hand side of your screen. If you want to um, ask any questions, uh, you can do so in the chat or you can ask them yourself. We're going to take, we're doing, going to do the Q&A at the, at the end um, and Karen will facilitate that. So you can either write your question in the chat or just say that you want to ask a question or wave your hands towards the end and, and we'll make sure that we get your question asked for you. Um, as I said, this session is being recorded and it will be available. It will also be emailed out to you um, um, very quickly with some information about the Great West Way as well. Um, so thank you very much. We, there may be some quiz, quiz witty effects as well when we're saying next slide, please. Um, so uh, to keep you all um, familiar with the current uh, as it has been. And now I'm going to hand over to Flo Florence Wallace from the Great West Way to introduce her, uh, her team and partners. And um, I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Thanks a lot for that. Yeah, hi everybody. Um, thanks for having us. We're, um, we've got the Great West Way team here today. There's myself, Florence Wallace, my colleague Fiona Errington, who'll give us a quick wave. Um, we've also got our ambassador partners, Bethan and Val from Strawberry Hill House are there, Jen Edmondson from Bowwood House and Gardens, and Becca West from the Roman Bath. So you'll be hearing from us all uh, in a short while. Um, if you just bear with me, I'm going to share my screen. So um, we are going to be able to entertain you for the next 45 minutes or so. There's an opportunity for you to ask questions um, at the end, but please, um, yeah, please do pop anything in chat if you want to ask anything in the mid in, in the mid presentation. Okay, so welcome to Great West Way, one of the world's premier touring routes between London and Bristol. Um, we will be exhibiting on the 19th of March, and um, you probably want to know, if you don't already know, um, what is the Great West Way? Well, it's a touring route between London and Bristol with around 500 miles of nav nav navigable routes. And it was based on one of the first great roads commissioned by the Kings of England. Um, it's for curious travellers who are searching for the real England, those who want to explore further, delve deeper, and I'll uncover the essence of England. So what's it like? Well, it rubs shoulders with the world <laughs> heritage sites. There are many British um, icons, such as Bath and Windsor, Southern Cotswolds, and of course, Stonehenge. But there's also um, a range of travel options and how you move around is up to you. So you can use the road networks, the railways, the waterways, the cycle routes, um, uh, there's, there's many different ways of getting around. 
Um, and as I said, it offers an extraordinary variety of English experiences not found in any other part of the country. So you can discover our way with a range of themed itineraries such as history and heritage, food and drink, waterways, city and culture, gardens, local people, sport and adventure. There is definitely something for everyone. And some of you will be familiar th with this route, but Fiona's going to explain um, the destinations along the route. Hi everyone. Um, so yeah, so on, on the screen now you can see what we call the Great West Way route map. And as Flo mentioned, it's 500 miles of nav navigable route, which we both can't seem to say. Um, so obviously London to Bristol by train is only two hours, but the idea of the Great West Way is that you slow down and you take your time to discover more about what there is. Um, so on the route map, you can see the shaded corridor and that's really what we describe as the Great West Way, although it does go up, you know, we do say, you know, places just off the Great West Way. For instance, Blenheim Palace, we work with them. They're just off the Great West Way. So if you go from east, obviously, we've got Bristol and we've got the connectivity of Bristol Airport. Um, and then you come along and obviously we've got Bath, which is, you know, very well known with its two World Heritage Site um, recognition. Um, and obviously we've got Becca here today to talk about the Roman baths. Um, then we go up into the Southern Cotswolds. We've got um, Westenburg, Malmesbury. Um, we also straddle into the um, Cotswolds and the Wiltshire borders there. Um, so Wiltshire covers two thirds of the Great West Way. So that's very much the part in the middle. And there's lots and lots of uh, Wiltshire towns along the Great West Way, which are lovely market authentic um, British towns such as Bradford-on-Avon, Crowbridge, um, Corsham, which is where a lot of pole dark was filmed, Chippenham, Palm, um, Devizes, Vale of Pusey, Marlborough, um, North Wessex Downs and Swindon. So all of those places have an awful lot that you can explore. You know, some are, are um, busy bustling towns, some are small little quaint villages with honeystone um, cottages, etc. Um, and then as you move further across, you go to sort of Hungerford, Newbury and Reading. Again, these are all on the canal and they've got quite a, a lot of canal features. Um, then we move into the Thames Valley in North Hampshire. We've got Henley on Thames, Marlow, High Wycombe. Again, you know, you've got lovely countryside around there and the River Thames. So you can do sort of a bit of the multimodal activity, walking, boating, cycling. Um, and then we go into sort of another one of the well-known areas, um, the Royal Borough of Windsor and Maidenhead. Of course, with the Jubilee this year, Windsor is going to be getting, um, the Diamond Jubilee going to be getting a lot of attention. Um, and it's great to have these well-known places on the Great West Way because they're, they're really, you know, people want to go and see them as well as the lesser known places. So there we've got Windsor Castle um, noted on the map so that everyone can see, see where that is. Um, and then you slowly go, you know, obviously into um, uh, Richmond and London. And again, at that end of the route, obviously, we've got Heathrow Airport again, which is great for the connectivity. So there's, there's a lot of connectivity along there. Um, obviously, the, the rail, um, we've got the rail and bus pass that runs along the route, and that's marked on the map with the dotted line, um, which is a route that we work with GWR. We've got the GWR Discoverer Pass. Um, so yeah, so that sort of gives you it in a nutshell, but now what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at a film that actually uh, really brings the route to life.
Excellent. I hope you um, enjoyed that. That's sort of given you a bit of an insight into um, into the route as a whole. Um, it's quite a good um, way of seeing it from um, from the map. But um, I just wanted to highlight a few things that we know are happening in 2022 that might be of interest to you. Um, walking tours and trails. There's a number of new walking tours that have been um, put together. The Vale of Pusey have actually been awarded a Walkers of Welcome status and they've got two new walking itineraries available. Um, Malmesbury has a 350 year anniversary of the trial of the Malmesbury witches um, and the town's in introducing a new uh, multimedia trail. Um, vintage Classics, um, which is a private hire vintage car uh, product, they've got a new driving tour along the Great Way, which actually does uh, give you uh, maps and details as to how to find all the eight horses, white horses within Wiltshire. Um, and in addition to that, there is some exciting exhibitions and events. Um, the new Thomas Hardy exhibitions from the Wessex Museums are going into the place this summer and from the 28th of May to the 30th of October, um, within four fascinating exhibitions, um, Hardy's Wessex will be the largest collection of Thomas Hardy memorabilia ever displayed at one time. That's in the Salisbury Museum and the Wiltshire Museum, um, Dorset Museum and Paul Museum. Um, the World of Stonehenge exhibition, another very, very um, important exhibition that's gone in at the British Museum or going in at the British Museum, 17th of February to the 17th of July, that will be open. Um, they'll, they're, they're offering uh, special offer entrance tickets to uh, Stonehenge and also to the Salisbury and Wiltshire Museums as part of that as well. Um, and Reading will be celebrating their 200 year old um, anniversary of its business manufacturing history with Huntley and Palmers. Um, so they'll have a programme of events. And do keep a lookout for the, um, the Jubilee events programme as well. Uh, many events are still in planning and preparation. I know Windsor Castle have got exhibitions and events going on. I know there'll be others too. So keep a look out uh, and our Great West Way website will have more details on that shortly. So what can you see and do along the Great West Way? Well, as we've pointed out, there are some amazing attractions um, and this is just a sample of a few. Um, so if you're looking for something to do on the River Thames. You've got Thames River Cruise boats that go out daily. Um, you can go and see the last Concorde at Aerospace near Bristol. Longleat's got a safari park and a stately home um, in Wiltshire. The American Museum and Gardens in Bath is a fabulous visit for anybody interested in American history. Of course, the magnificent Windsor Castle, which um, is very apt this year. And also um, we've just highlighted there the Museum of English rural life, but there are many, many more. Um, and uh, we've got about 220 listings of different things to see and do in our travel trade directory. Some are known, some are less well known, but please do um, refer to either the website or the particularly for the trade, the travel trade directory, which gives you all the trade information you need for, for the amazing attractions and things to do. I'm going to pass you over now to Beth Ann and Val, who are going to talk to you and tell you a little bit more about a fabulous attraction to visit, which is Strawberry Hill House and Gardens. Thank you, Flo. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Beth and I'm the marketing manager at Strawberry Hill House, and I'm here with my colleague Valerie. Good afternoon, everyone. And Valerie runs the tours here. Um, so Strawberry Hill House um, and Garden has been open to visitors for over 250 years. Created by Horace Walpole in the 18th century, Strawberry Hill is internationally known and um, famous as Britain's finest example of domestic Georgian Gothic revival architecture. Conceived as an ancestral castle, the house was built with the help of friends, including the amateur architect Don Shute, as well as professional architects such as uh, Robert Adams. Walpole succeeded beyond measure in creating the enchanting Strawberry Hill house uh, inspiration for the first ever Gothic novel, The Castle of Otranto. Um, so I'd like to share uh, on the next slide a short film exploring Horace Walpole's little Gothic castle. The birthplace of the first Gothic novel, The Castle of Otranto, 
and 18th century architecture's Gothic revival, Strawberry Hill is the lasting creation of Horace Walpole. Horace Walpole was a man of many talents, but it is not until now that Horace Walpole's brilliance and importance as a designer at his little Gothic castle in Twickenham have been rediscovered. Strawberry Hill House is one of the greatest historical buildings in the world, creating a tourist attraction that is as popular today as it was in the 1700s. Thank you, Flo. So next slide. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed that film sharing just some of the, inc some of the incredible rooms and spaces um, within the house and garden, some of which you can see on your screens now that makes Strawberry Hill House such a, such a special place to visit and, and for me to work. Um, in Walpole's time, Strawberry Hill's proximity to central London and its spectacular collections made it a popular visitor attraction Managed now by a small, dedicated team and supported by a brilliant group of volunteers, today the house welcomes over 25,000 um, visitors annually. Following a 9 million restoration, Strawberry Hill opened its doors to the public in 2010, and today visitors have the opportunity to follow in historic footsteps and explore this award-winning, beautifully restored house. We have a number of feature rooms, um, and some of them you can see on screen now. Just on the top left-hand corner, you can see the gallery, which is the showpiece of the house. Um, this magnificent room was completed in 1763 for the display of Walpole's pictures and for the purpose of entertaining. And it was this room which inspired Walpole to make his famous admission, I begin to be ashamed of my own magnificence. Um, and returned last year, which you can see behind us, um, after 247 years, a group portrait of Catherine de' Medici with her children first bought by Horace Warpole um, and has returned with thanks to the, the acceptance and lease scheme supported by the Arts Council. Um, this monumental painting, um, made in 1561, was a work of the workshop of Francais Clouet and a highly successful portrait painter at the French court. Um, and it's only been publicly displayed before now three times in the last 126 years, but it's now on permanent display for everyone to enjoy when visiting Strawberry Hill. One of our other feature rooms, you can see on the bottom left-hand side, two in, is the library, designed up by Horace Walpole's instructions, including bookcases in the form of Gothic arches based on the side door of the choir in the old St. Paul's Cathedral. This room housed many of Walpole's eventual collection, including over 7,000 books, and you really get a sense of how Gothic the house is in this particular room. And this year, rather excitingly, we've announced three new and focused displays for 2022. Um, all featuring objects and artwork that tell us the extraordinary story of Strawberry Hill and its inhabitants. Um, the Grand Tour is the first one. It will be the Grand Tour, the Two Horaces and the Court of Florence, which runs from the 24th of March to the 24th of July. This display is dedicated to the Italian Grand Tour, in particular the friendship between Strawberry Hill, uh, creator Horace Warpole, and the British envoy to Florence, Horace Mann and both men were infatuated with both Florence and the Dimitri family. So lots more on that to come. Um, then later towards the summer, we've got Pollock Theatres from the 7th of July to the 8th of October. This, this exhibition plays homage to Horace Walpole through the display of a series of early 19th century Victorian toy theatres from the historic collection of the Pollock's Toy Museum, which is today part of the Benjamin Pollock's Toy Shop, one of the oldest toy shops in London. Um, and then to end the year, we've got the Tudors and the Lost um, Jewel Dagger of Henry VIII from the 29th of September to the 1st of January 2023. Um, Hor Horace Walpole's fascination by the Tudors and the Strawberry and at Strawberry Hill was well known. Um, he even had a room, um, the Holbein Chamber, in honour of this. And this exhibition celebrates his fascination for the past, the British Renaissance and the impact that this kind of has um, in his theatrical taste. Um, on his collections. So now I'd like to pass over to our tours manager, Valerie, just to tell you a bit more about the tours at Strawberry Hill House. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, just to say that we look forward to welcoming you, you back to Strawberry Hill House, or for the first time, 
after what has been a difficult um, couple of years for everybody. Um, just to give you a little bit of information about the tours, the groups, we need a minimum of 15 people who can enjoy, uh, to book on the tour, who can enjoy an exclusive private tour of Strawberry Hill House. The tour is about 90 minutes and it's a guided tour exploring the history, interiors and stories of its residents by one of our very knowledgeable guides. The maximum we can put on a tour is 20, but we can run tours of 50 plus. We just need to run multiple tours, spacing them about 10 minutes apart. And um, obviously this is for COVID safety and also some of the historic rooms are very small in the house. Tours can take place any day of the week, but we have specifically reserved Thursdays for the larger tour groups and generally have much more flexibility to suit your timings on these days. Um, as Beth has mentioned, we will have small object and focus exhibitions in the house, which will be incorporated in the guided tour as well, which will add a, which is an added bonus. Um, we can run many tours to suit you, so your needs, such as an out of hours twilight tour. This is usually kicked off with a glass of fizz and the house offers an incredibly theatrical atmosphere for visitors to enjoy. We can also run painted glass tours photographic sessions and garden tours at a reduced rate in conjunction with the house tours. Again, we can also offer a range of catering options, including delicious and reasonable lunches after your tour on the garden terraces overlooking the Walpole's lawns, uh, Walpole afternoon tea, or an evening drinks and canapes in the stunning and, um, and ornate gallery before or after your tour. This is the gallery behind <laughs> us. <laughs> um, we, and obviously with catering, we can cater for all dietary requirements. Um, so to conclude, we offer one free place for your group travel organiser when booking for over 15 people, very experienced guides and stewards and private tours available exclusively out of hours. The cost of a tour is £15 per person. We look forward to welcoming you back to Strawberry Hill. And if I can help you with any further queries, please don't hesitate to contact me on the email below. And lastly, there is something truly remarkable about Horace Walpole's Little Gothic Castle. And I do hope that you will visit to experience that mag the magic that this inspiring house and garden has to offer. Thank you very much. And now I'll pass you back to Flo. Thank you. Thanks, Valerie. Thanks, Beth. That's uh, Strawberry Hill House. How fabulous does that look? Um, I'm going to pass you over now to Becca, who's going to tell you um, more about the Roman Baths. Hello, everyone. I'm Rebecca West. I am the Heritage Marketing Manager here at the Roman Baths. Um, firstly, I have to start with a with an apology. In the last three minutes, what sounds like the world's loudest roadworks have just started right outside my window. So uh, I'm not sure what they're doing, but uh, they're making a fair amount of noise. So I would endeavour to make myself heard over the noise. <laughs> okay, so about the Rome Baths. So uh, the Rome Baths are located right in the heart of the historic centre of Bath. They were once the site of one of the finest historic sites in Northern Europe. And we were one of the great religious spas of the ancient world. And in Roman times, people would travel from far and wide to worship at the temple of the goddess Sulis Minerva and bathe in the sacred waters of the natural thermal spring. And those springs still flow today and still heat the baths and surrounding complex with hot water. We are located, as I said, right in the centre of Bath. We are about a 10, 15 minute walk from the train station and we are about a five to 10 minute walk from a coach drop-off point in the center of Bath. So really easy to get to, really easy for visitors to find their way, to find their way about the city. So what is there for modern visitors to do at the bars? So firstly, unfortunately, we don't allow people to swim in the waters any, anymore. But what they can do is walk on the actual pavements that the Romans trod on, explore the beautiful bathing complex, so as well as the iconic Great Bath, which you can just see um, on the left there. There are a series of smaller bars around the site that people can explore and find out more about. We also have the remains of the temple of Sulis Minerva and our museum 
which contains many precious artifacts which have been excavated both from the site and from the surrounding area. And these include things like the gilt bronze head of the goddess Sulis Minerva, and my personal favorite, the curse tablets, which are small pieces of pewter and lead, where, which were found in the sacred spring where, the people, where we believe that people thought that the goddess lived. And people would write um, little prayers or sometimes curses against people they didn't like, throw them into the spring and in hope that the goddess would answer their prayers. So those are some of my favourite things about the bars, but I have also asked some of my colleagues to feed in about what they love about the bars and what they make, think makes it so special. So Flo, I will ask you to uh, play the video. Um, Well, there are only two Roman baths in the world that still have hot mineral water flowing into them, and one of them is here in Bath. It's difficult to sum up the Roman baths in just a few words, but uh, it's a fantastic place, and it's one place where you can come close to the reality of the Roman world. A day out at the Roman baths means a chance to have a lot of fun, but also learn stuff while you're here and discover one of the best preserved Roman sites in Britain. People can walk on the actual pavements that Romans walked on, and that is one of the most exciting things. We haven't done anything to that, it's genuine pavement. They can taste the water, the spa water, with its 43 different minerals in it. Uh, they can talk to the Romans. Our costume characters are great. I think they really bring to life the idea of the Romans living here 2,000 years ago. They stay within character, so any questions you ask them about taking photographs, they will not do, but they will offer to pose for a portrait for you. We run family activities here every school holiday and also various points during the summer holidays. By the time you finish doing all that, you're probably a bit peckish. Uh, so you could go to the pump room, which is a wonderful dining salon. Once you visit Rome and Bath, you will never forget it. It was brilliant! Thank you so much for flow. Okay, so in terms of other, th other features of the, Romans, of the Roman baths, so uh, as I'm sure you noticed in the video, there were people walking about with audio guides in their hands. So we do an audio tour around the Roman baths. Um, we have that available in 21 different languages, including English, Dutch, French, German, Italian, Japanese, Korean, Mandarin, Polish, Portuguese, Russian and Spanish. We also have a um, specialised children's tour for our youngest visitors um, and this was narrated by former um, poet, children's poet laureate uh, Michael Rosen and we recommend that people should aim to spend or about an hour and a half at the baths during their, during their visits. There's a lot to see and do in the bar in the bar, so we think that's probably the amount of time you need to really get the most out of your visit. So what's coming up in 2022? Well, the first bit of news is very exciting because as an ancient site, I never get to say this, but we have opened a new section of the bars and a new part of the attraction, the Roman gym. So this opened at the end of last year and is the section of the baths where we believe that the Romans would go to exercise, work out, keep fit and healthy, before then moving into the um, bath side of the Roman baths and taking the waters. So what is there to do in this area? There's, unsurprisingly, there were no treadmills in Roman times. And so it's more to do with the games that they would have played, including the game Trigon, 
which is a game where with a ball, which you threw with your right hand, but had to catch with your left hand. And there's all sorts of information on that. It sounds easy, but we did have a staff game of this and it was a little embarrassing how hard we found it. So would definitely recommend having a go at home once you've been and found out more about it. Also a lot there on Roman medicine and the remains of an ancient Lauconicum, um, which was a Roman sauna and where people would go um, to sit and enjoy a lovely steam room. Also in 2022, um, we have our late night bookings over the summer. And this is a um, period where we keep the bars open till late at night. So they shut at 10 p.m. last entry at 9 p.m. And visitors can explore the Roman baths by torch night and pick up a glass of Prosecco at our pop up bar. We also have um, the World Heritage Centre of Bath, which is a new attraction opening just over the road from us. And this will be a free to enter attraction where people can go in, find a little bit more about the history and the heritage of Bath before going out and exploring the wider city itself. Flo, could you move us on to the next slide, please? So for more information on how to book, all of the information you need is here. So we do ask for a minimum of 20 people per group. Um, at the moment, we are asking everyone um, to pre-book their visits and confirm numbers 48 hours ahead of their visit. And this is just because we are still operating at time, to, um, at time stops and time capacities. Group benefits include a free audio guide included in the price, a discount on your standard entry and free um, entry for a group leader per 20 people booking. And if anyone has any questions or wants more information on how to book, please do get in touch either with me or with our group bookings team. Their contact details can be seen on the side there. And I look forward to seeing some of you in 2022. Thanks, Becca. That sounds amazing. Um, OK, we're going to go on now to hear from Jen, who's from Bowood House and Gardens. Hello. Yes. Hello. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. My name's Jen and I'm the head of marketing at Bowood House and Gardens in Wiltshire. Um, so today I'll tell you a little bit about Bowood, the tours and experiences available, and then um, all the important bits and pieces that you need to know um, for a future visit to Bowood. So the Bowood estate is, is located in Wiltshire between Carn and Chippenham, and it covers over 2000 acres. Bowood's been home to the Lansdowne family since 1754 and has been passed down through the generations ever since. The current custodians are the ninth Marquis and Marchioness of Lansdowne. So we open seasonally every year from the 1st of April through to the 1st of November and we welcome groups, um, large or small, daily from 11am. So Bowood House, shown here on the slide on the left, is set in 100 acres of capability brown parkland, it has a mile long lake, cascade waterfall, Doric temple, and an extensive arboretum. Now I know the family still live in the house, there are several rooms that are open to the public. So it's home, home to lots of historical artifacts, including Queen Victoria's wedding chair, Napoleon's death mask. And it's also home to the laboratory where um, Dr. Joseph Priestley discovered oxygen in 1774. Um, there's a beautiful library um, shown here with over 5,000 books, a family chapel, which is still used today, sculpture gallery and an impressive orangery, which was used as a Red Cross hospital during World War I and at one point housed an orangutan and a leopard. This was back in the 18th century, so nothing to worry about there. You can add on specific guided tours um, of the house, which obviously will just give you a much deeper insight into the history, the whole estate um, and the Lansdowne family. So we have a very short video to introduce you to Bowood. Thank you, Flo.
Thanks, Flo. Lovely, thank you. Um, so as we saw on the video, you can expect to see the really stunning gardens and the grounds um, surrounding the house on a visit. We have the Italian inspired terrace gardens um, in front of the house, the herbaceous border, which you can see there on the east side and Lord and Lady Lansdowne's um, award winning private wall gardens, um, which consist of four separate one acre gardens that are accessed via a secret door. So there were various guided garden tours throughout the season. You can explore the kitchen garden and the formal borders, learn more about the history of the garden, how they were used during the First and Second World War and how they're still used today to service Bowood House and the nearby Bowood Hotel. Um, we introduced head gardener tours last year, which proved incredibly popular, perfect for those kind of smaller groups. So it's more um, intimate with a special, and for people with a special interest in gardening, um, and specific gardens. So what's new for 2022? We're launching Bowood House Curator Tours led by our fantastic curator, Dr. Catherine Spence. So again, the numbers will be kept small just to enhance the experience. Um, and you can expect a fascinating insight into the family and some of the many treasures that are showcased in the house um, and the exhibition. So Catherine will showcase the treasures and explain you know, the work that she does um, to preserve these antiquities for the future generations. We have a brand new exhibition for 2022 entitled The Scarlet Marquis, based on the sometimes scandalous um, adventures of the second Marquis of Lansdowne. That's definitely one for the diary. Another feature at Bowood is the Spring Woodland Gardens, which date right back to the 1800s. They're open for six weeks during the flowering season between mid-April and early June. And over the 30 acres, you'll just see carpets of bluebells, azaleas, rhododendrons, uh, magnolias. Um, and you can combine a visit from, with the woodland gardens to the house and gardens um, for a full day. Can we move on, please, Flo? Thank you. So I'll just tell you a few things about everything you need to know. So to recap, uh, where are we? We're just five miles from Chippenham in Wiltshire and positioned just 15 minutes um, from Junction 17 of the M4, so easily accessible. We're a 40 minute drive from Bath to put things into perspective and we're five minutes from Laycock. Minimum group numbers are 12 throughout the season and we can either offer admission, just general admission into the house and grounds or additional garden tools of the house or the Capability Brown Parkland, if that's of interest, or the private wall garden tools. So very much a kind of mix and match, depending on what, uh, what you're more interested in. The head gardener and curator tools at this point are just on request as they are smaller numbers. Catering, we can offer anything from light refreshments, tea, coffee, to two cost lunch and cream teas. Uh, your group organisers will travel for free and we'll look after the coach driver with a free lunch. Lots of free parking, um, pricing, group admission pricing starts from just £12 per person. I think that gives you pretty much everything you need to know, a brief overview of what we can offer. And we very much look forward to welcoming you to Bowwoods um, in 2022 to experience it for yourself. Thank you. Oh, right, thanks. It's my turn now. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about accommodation um, along the Great West Way. There's a wide variety of accommodation. As you can see from this slide, there's a um, um, mixture of hotels, pubs, bed and breakfasts, apartments. Um, we've got everything from luxury with spas to um, countryside bed and breakfasts to pubs with rooms. Um, lots of self-catering, obviously city centre hotels or hotels in the middle of the countryside, lots of group friendly hotels. Um, and we've got quite a lot of glamping sites as well, which I know have proved very popular in the last few years. Um, now, if you look at our travel trade directory or on the website, you'll get all the full details of what is available and sort of the group rates that they offer. Um, and at any special facilities that they have. So the best thing to do is go to our accommodation bit on the website or the travel trade directory, and you can see sort of a wide range of, of accommodation. Um, so moving on, we'll talk about the food and drink experiences. Again, very, very popular with our tours and itineraries. Um, there's lots and lots of food and drink tours. You can sort of create a bespoke tour visiting various different food and drink outlets or you know if time doesn't um, allow maybe just visit one of them so 
Um, we've got lots of the vineyards along the route where you can obviously do lots of lots of tastings, um, tours around the vineyards. We've got several cookery schools on the slide. You can see Vaughan's Cookery School, which is in, in Devizes. Um, all sorts of different um, levels of um, cookery that you can do um, at, at the cookery schools. Um, we've got distillery tours. So you can see Bombay Sapphire Distillery in the middle of, of, of this slide there. Um, so you can go and learn all about um, Bombay Sapphire. I've, I've done one of those with a cocktail tasting. It's, it's definitely one that I'd recommend. It's, it's brilliant. Um, and then Savory yeah. Bath, again, on the left-hand side of the um, slide. Um, they'll take you around to do lots of tastings around the city of Bath. In fact, um, we're hoping as a team to go out and do a savouring Bath tour very soon so that we can give you some first hand uh, experience of it. Um, and then we've got lots of, um, you know, local produce um, on the slide there. You've got Cobb's Farm Shop and Kitchen. Um, so there's lots of lovely farm shops. There's lots of lovely English um, tea rooms. We've uh, got Bridges. Um, in Bradford on Avon, that, that's amazing. The Bridge Tea Rooms, they all dress up in a quintessentially English dress. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a lot of variety of food and drinks. If that's something that you're looking for, um, do, you know, again, have a look on the website, have a look on the Travel Trade Directory, because um, we've got a lot of details on them all um, in there as well. And then moving on, um, for those that are looking for something a little bit more active, Great West Way is a great um, place for doing sort of lots of different activities. Um, obviously, we've got the canal that runs along the route. Um, so you can either do some boating on the canal or you could do some walking along the towpath if you're looking for some gentle sort of exercise or there's cycle routes along the towpath. Um, keeping to the water, we've obviously got the River Thames again where you can do boating, um, canoeing, you know, there's, there's lots of different sort of waterside activities um, and then we've got um, lots of cycle routes along the um, Great West Way. Um, obviously the picture here is in Savanak, um, no it's in Swinley um, Forest I think but there's there's lots of forests where you can do mountain biking or you can do like I mentioned before cycling uh, more gentler along the canal so there's, there's lots of opportunity for cycling um, or Go out on your four-legged friends. There's um, horse riding. You know, there's lots of AONBs where you can um, hire horses. Um, there are spaces on the Great West Way where you can actually take your own horse and, and sort of, you know, um, rent somewhere and take take your own horses. So there's there's lots of opportunities there for horse riding. Um, and then walking. That's very very popular. You can either join in on a walking tour. Um, you know, it could be a one day tour or a one hour tour. There, there's lots of different levels that you can do sort of walking tours along the Great West Way. And then for those that are really looking for a bit of an adventure, you can do a bit of paragliding or hot air ballooning or, you know, you name it. I'm sure we can uh, arrange it. But there's, there's certainly lots of opportunities for outdoor activities and there's a lot of space. So, um, again, have a look on the website or um, on the Travel Trade Directory. Yeah, and also, you know, just traveling the Great West Way, using the Great West Way as a journey um, experience. So rather than looking at it as getting from one end to the other or from A to B, we're, we're trying to get people to slow down and enjoy the, the journey uh, that, they're, that they're on um, and um, not rush too much through it. So, um, so yeah, it's worth pointing out at this stage, we do have a Great West Way GWR Discoverer Pass. Um, and that is an integrated rail and bus ticket that either does a three day ticket or a seven day ticket. Um, and um, you can buy that um, through um, the online channels. So have a look on our website if that's of interest. Um, we've obviously got a number of uh, tours and transport partners we work, we work closely with. Um, if you're looking for coaches, if you're looking for tour guides, um, we've got details of those again, uh, all on the website or in the um, travel trade directory. And, and we're, try, we're working quite closely now with um, providers who are more sustainable. So sustainability is really important to us. We're trying to develop uh, the route as a sustainable uh, way of traveling. Um, we've got some, again, further information about that on our website. Um, again, looking at um, destinations that are within easy reach. We mentioned some of these earlier that you can go either north or south of the route. 
um, within easy reach of the route it, it, to head out to Oxford or the Cotswolds or Salisbury is absolutely fine. Um, we like to sort of, you know, get people to use the accommodation along the route, but then for day trips could venture uh, further afield. And of course, we're a route for all seasons. It's not just about a summer season. And we know uh, a lot of the trade uh, want to come when it's not hectically busy in the summer holidays or in, in school holiday periods. So, you know, please do utilise the Great West Way during other times of the year. There's a big, there's a big um, lot of product now available for Christmas with a lot of light shows and light, light events and seasonal um, offerings. It's a beautiful time come in the autumn when the colours of the trees are just going. We've got lots of um, beautiful um, places to visit where you can see that. And, um, and equally in the spring, as you've heard from Jen and Bowood, um, and some of our other people that, that they're just beautiful at different times of the year. So do consider that when you're looking to book groups in. Um, helping you sell, the, there are a range of, um, of, of uh, collateral that we put together. I've mentioned the Travel Trade Directory a few times, um, but that really is at the moment the Bible of information for you guys. Uh, we also have a travel magazine, which is a nice consumer. Um, sort of focused uh, publication. Again, there's a latest version is, is online. There's the Rough Guide to the Great West Way, uh, which is a booklet. Um, we've got the um, Great West Way map. And in fact, we, we are actually currently working on a new map um, that we'll hope to be able to bring up for excursions. Um, and then we've got um, a food and drink map, map and the Kennet and Avon, Avon Canal map and our brand toolkit. So there's a range of different uh, collateral that we've got produced. Um, some is being sort of updated digitally, whereas other, others, others are being printed still. So um, please do shout if you're interested in getting copies of anything. And finally, just to say we will be at excursions at the excursion show on Saturday the 19th of March. Come and find the Great West Way stand, um, SW004. Uh, we've got stand sharers um, who include Reading, Thames, Windsor, Wiltshire, Bath, Bristol, and Marlborough. And the attractions that sort of sit underneath those destinations include Longleat, Bowwood, Museum of English Rural Life, Wessex Museums, Thames River Cruise, and Marlborough College Summer School. And for the first time, we are actually offering a coach transfer service. And this is with our sustainable coach tour operator partner, Tour Easy, who are putting on a coach starting at Swindon. Uh, picking up in Marlborough, Newbury, Reading and Slough. So it's only five pounds. It's a really, really good way of getting to the show at Twickenham. So please, please do look at the excursions website where you can find details to book yourself onto that coach transfer at one of those stops. That's all from us. I hope that's been really informative, but please do let us know if you have any questions. Thank you very much, Flo. Um, that was really interesting and I certainly found out some new information. Um, so that was really good. There's no questions in the chat at the moment. So does anybody have a question that they'd like to ask? If so, if you put your um, hand up in the um, box along the bottom. I don't think I can see everybody actually, hold on. No. Doesn't look like we have any questions. Must have covered all of it, everything in that um, comprehensive presentation. It was fantastic. Thank you. Come and, come and see us and ask us any questions on the stand in, in March or, or, or do drop us an email if you need to get hold of any of us before then. There will be an e-newsletter e going out after this session where you can see a link to the recording. Um, please share it with any other um, operators, GTOs that you know that might be interested. Um, and also there's some information um, and links to the partners that you've seen today. Um, I think we can probably say, actually, if there's nobody got anything, remind you that we've got um, two more tomorrow. And um, then we've got two more every day, actually, for the rest of the week. Um, so please feel free to register for any of them and um, we look forward to seeing you at the next one but thank you very much for taking the time today Catch and Karen, you... Margaret's got her hand up oh. Margaret Jowett thank you I can't see that thank you Margaret Margaret would you like to unmute no, I wasn't really going to say anything but I thoroughly enjoyed it 
and and I do small groups to individual places. So I was quite happy to see it, and I was interested in the cost of the day in booking them as well. So thank you. Yes, yeah, very helpful. That's great, and it's always good to hear from people to say what you would like to see in these um, sessions as well. If mm. we're missing something, then that would be a great opportunity to let us know. So thank mm. you, Margaret. For well, that. it was the house of Strawberry Hill, which I have been to. I find that fascinating, and um, the, that sort of thing. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you. Okay, I think Elaine. Um, I think we yep. must say goodbye and um, look forward yep. to seeing some of you tomorrow. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, that's fantastic. Thank you for your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.